by quasi-popular demand, <clears throat> I apologize to both of my fans for being so late getting started. Um, I was with family and just really wasn't able to get um, here as quickly as I would have liked, so... That's the only excuse I can really offer. But that's okay, because even though we're starting late, we're still going to play for our minimum of two hours. Um, I anticipate that I'll probably spend most of the night doing side quests and little fun stuff, because now that we've gotten a few levels under our belt, we can start building out our party a little bit more um, in preparation for our trip to Mateo, which is going to be a kick in the pants. Um, I, I mean, I made the game. I, I made this game. And I have played it many, many times. And every time, I get a little flabbergasted by how tough stuff is once you get to Mateo. But, I firmly believe that it is not unbalanced. Because the game does warn you, and you do have a lot of opportunities to level up and to do various side quests and things. I think it's just a matter of... Um, preparation. That's the first time that you really need, I mean, kind of like when you go through the mountains, you know, you, you can't really approach it blindly. Um, it's not set up to make you fail, but it is set up to make you take stock of yourself and what you've been doing in the game so, thus far. So, uh, let me close some of this, some of these 15 windows down real quick so that we don't get inundated with bullshit. There we go. All right. <clears throat> cool. Well. Oh, and I got to check our challenge, too. Let's check our challenge and see how our challenge is looking. Um. Okay, so it's looking like we're leaning towards Abzu, honestly. We got 90% raised for Abzu, seven days left. A little bit of money in, a little bit of channel points in Moonlighter, a little bit in, none in the forest, so the forest is probably definitely a no. But, you know, there's still time if somebody who's been stockpiling their points wants to do some, wants me to do some Moonlighter instead, that is always an option. So, anyway, <clears throat> here we go. having some issues here there we go all right so last i checked we were just our reports indicate that the zeppelin went down just west of ensenada if you leave new Pinavinto and head north you should spot it i'll be waiting here for your report good luck all righty do we have any of the coins yet no hey buddy Oh, yeah, I do. Gavel coin. All right. I seem to be having some issues. Hang on. I'm having some problems with my Twitch because I'm a professional. It, it keeps, it's saying I'm live, but then it's showing me a very old episode of Spyro. Yes, I'm live, idiot. There you go. Jesus Christ. All right, anyway. Yeah, I don't, it, it's not, it's, it's, it's the, it's the Twitch studio. It's not the game. Oh, and we've already, okay, and we've already finished the quest for, um, Dude Man down here, yeah? Okay. I really wish I had implemented a journal system in this game. Um, that would have helped a lot <laughs> to know which quests I needed to start and finish and all that jazz. little secret right here. 
I don't have a machete yet though. But there's a there's a scabbers stash there. So if you stay on the roads, you won't get attacked. Read it. Okay, we've already read that. Oh, look at these weak little level five enemies. I love it. We finally got 25 wasp stingers. So we can turn that quest in to the guy in um, FCP Bravo. So this, um, this was actually a late addition to this item. I actually did a little bit of work after the fact and fixed it up, but when we, there it is. When we, um, we went to the area in that cemetery and we found the mystic ring, this mystic ring, it gives you some decent stat bonuses. It gives you 20 points to your focus and resist stats. But more importantly, it gives you a really good skill called Spirit Touch, which deals, it ignores defense, and it deals minor neutral damage. So the way this works is it basically has, it has a 10% variable to the damage, but it's just doing three times Bridget's magic attack. That's all it does. With neutral damage, so it doesn't, or four times, I'm sorry. Yeah. Four times her focus stat with a 10% swing and no defense applies towards it. And what it is, is it's the move that the spook lights, the ghosts, which we're going to start seeing soon. It's the move that the ghosts use on you. It's their, it's their signature ability. And it's a really good ability. Um, <clears throat> so eventually that ring is going to end up in somebody else's sweaty little mitts. But for now... So this is what we're doing. We've seen this before. The quartermaster posted a note saying he needed 25 wasp stingers. Maybe if we bring them to him, it will improve his mood. Oh, just what do you think you're doing here? My bad. Guess we'll just take all these wasp stingers and leave. Wait, what? Listen, I'm sorry. It's not easy trying to keep these guys supplied. And sometimes I can be a bit, well, challenging? Heh. <laughs> Guess that's one word for it. I'm really sorry. As far as I'm concerned, you guys are okay in my book. I'll radio over to the others and let them know that you can buy stuff from them now. Oh, and here, payment for the stingers. I'll even throw in a dagger on the house. If you ever need any gear, be sure to stop back by. 242 XP, 350 volts, and a wasp dagger. So, this is something that I actually, a lot of, a lot of the time when I'm doing playthroughs, I will finish this before I go west across the mountains, in which case this is actually a nice little upgrade the Wasp Dagger is. It's not super powerful, as you can see, but it does have a good chance to cause poison. And all of the Trailblazer's gear, with the exception of um, one thing that we buy from a different shop, these are all made from monster parts. So they actually get a little bonus based on the monster. So right now we've got Wasp Spears, daggers and knuckles which are all made from death wasp stingers so they have a chance to cause poison just like the death wasps normal attack does and then the pincer sword is made from an antlion pincer and it has like a i think it's a four percent bonus or a six percent bonus to your critical hit chance which is really nice at lower levels um and it's not terribly heavy based on you know what it's made from so 
Sorry we're a little short right now. When our guy Butler gets back, he can help me whip up some stuff. Who is this Butler person? Wasn't he the one you left the note about the stingers for? <clears throat> yeah, he's a bit of a weird guy, but there's no one better at hunting monsters. Or bots. Or people. He said he was going to gather some black carapace, thick fur, and bony plates, but that was days ago. It's a lot of stuff to be looking for. Did he give you any idea where he planned to get it? Yeah, he did. You can get all that stuff from millipedes and shell beasts. Butler once told me that the only place in Marema a person could find both was Riel Dara Valley, west of the Pedregal River. That's close to where we live. Nolan, do you think maybe we could check the area and try to track him down? Uh, I'm really not crazy about going to Real Dara Valley. We'll have to see. <clears throat> Tear down the bounty. And now we should be able to rest in here. And then there's another little side quest we can do here. It's not a, it's, it's kind of an off the books quest. But, so now we've got Stark up to a level where he can pick locks. They call this a lock? It's like they want me to take their stuff. You got charged nucleus. This appears to be charged with kinetic energy. It could be used as a focus. Weird. Maybe we should talk to some of the trailblazers and see where it came from. So what we got... The crystallized nucleus of a sludge has been stabilized for use as a kinetic focus. And just like with all Trailblazers gear, it is made from a monster. And it gives you a slight bonus based on what the monster's abilities are. So in this case, it gives you... <clears throat> where is it? A very nice little magic evasion boost. Where you have a 4% bonus chance for enemy magic or mental attacks to just not affect you. So, pretty nice. And this is who we want to talk to, is the little wizardy looking girl. Hello, are you new around here? The Trailblazers can always use new recruits, especially now, because they've been losing people. Wait, you found my charged nucleus? Oh yeah, sorry if we shouldn't have taken it. The locker it was in was super dusty and we assumed, oh, it's all right. We have to take what we can get out here in the Deadlands. I hope you find it useful. That's really nice of you. Thanks. So tell me, did you make this? How did you turn part of a sludge into a focus? Oh, it wasn't easy. I learned how to do it from a pale-skinned man who came through here a while back. He said he thought I had a talent for it. The problem is I haven't been able to practice it much. Really? Well, what if we brought you more stuff to turn into foci? Could you make us even better weapons? Hmm, I suppose I could, but I don't much see the point in practicing on more sludge parts. Wait, I know! Have you ever fought a spook light? It's a kind of ghost that can be found deep in the Deadlands or in other secluded areas. If you could bring me one of their lanterns, that could work. So, do you have a soul lantern from a spook light? Not right now, but I'll keep an eye out. We're at the point where we're going to start seeing spook lights. We shouldn't have been running into them yet unless we were doing something crazy. Hey, hey, just talk to the boss. Welcome. See anything you want to buy or are you just selling? So we want to buy this. We want to buy a scrap cutter, which is a little bit pricey. So the scrap cutter is a one-handed tool made from a Lumba Beetle's mandible, but we don't want it as a weapon. Although it's not a bad weapon if you're getting this stuff early on in the game. We want it because we have a dead hander that needs one back in um, Altuza's grave. Oh, and we're going to hit this too. There's a truck part just down the road. Approach. Hey, what's up? We saw you coming a ways off. Did you want to buy any charms? They're all handmade. You're a merchant? What are you doing all the way out here? <clears throat> Not a merchant, exactly. We used to be part of the gang in Okarongo, but the Deadhanders showed up and started making a push to reclaim the town. The boss wanted to fight them, but not us. 
So we grabbed our stuff and got out of there while we still could. Figured this was as good a time as any to give up the scaving life. Maybe find a little spot out east and set up shop. First, we need to raise enough money to get past that checkpoint the dead handers set up. So what do you say? Want to buy one of my good luck charms? They're only 2,000 bolts each. So we can say yes or we can say no. And either way, this guy is going to move to Pedregal Springs now that we've found him. But normally, the charms cost 3,000 volts, so he's giving us a 33% discount. So I'm going to say yes, because I have the money. Sure, why not? Everyone needs a little luck out here, right? Ember Charm. Great, thanks. Maybe we'll see you again out east. Sorry, I'm all out. And now he's just gone. That was our, that was our one chance to get a cheap Ember Charm which just like the other charms, it's it's imbued with a specific type of kinesis energy. This one's gonna be fire. So it gives us a 50% resistance to fire, or 25%, I'm sorry, 25% resistance to fire. And it also lets us cast pyro, which, you know, whatever. Um, the defense is the good thing for it. The other thing is more just situational. Uh, which, by the way, did I buy Gregory a, a Holy Charm? We'll have to go back and get a Holy Charm for Gregory at some point before we go to Mateo. But anyway, so now we're here. Oh, and while we're here, as you may recall, last time we, um, we gave that guy um, the military outfit so that he could sneak past the guards. Well, if you come up here, once you've helped him, once you've given him the military clothing and the military hat, wait, are these the clothes we gave that dead hander back in East Side? Sure seems that way. So should we take them? Why not? He's obviously done using them. So we don't, <laughs> what goes around comes around, I guess. So we don't actually lose any money on that, on that little side quest. And once we go to Ensenada and we meet him, he'll tell us about those. Oh, look. Oh, that's right, because we, we busted Nathan out of prison, didn't we? Or no? This car is a total bust. I doubt I can pull anything other than scrap metal off it at this point, but even that won't be easy without a scrap cutter. Offer him yours. A scrap cutter, huh? I actually have an extra one on me right now. Really? Oh man, is there any way I could trade you for it? It'd be a huge help. Hmm. I'm gonna ask him for nothing, because I made the game, so I know what to do. Here, you can have it. It's not like I was using it anyway. Hey, thanks a bunch. This is gonna make things so much easier. Tell you what, take this. It's certainly worth the cost of a scrap cutter, at least. Dead hander jacket, dead hander mask. Don't worry, they're clean. I just happen to have a spare set of clothing. It's not like I swiped them or anything. Hey, thanks again for that scrap cutter. So this is a nice little upgrade for one of our characters. So dead hander gear gives you a nice little luck bonus and an attack bonus. And it's not bad in terms of defense either. I mean, it's light armor, um, but it does give you a nice little earth and wind resistance boost as well as the luck and attack power boost. So overall dead hander gear is pretty good. So we'll give her the dead hander gear for now. Actually, yeah, this is the same stuff that Stark is wearing. We got to go back to the checkpoint real quick. Oh, no, we did. We, we helped him, right? Yeah, because we, we talked to the guard in the... Uh, in the East checkpoint and we we tricked him into thinking that Nathan was a dead hander and that the leader of the dead handers would be pissed if they found out he was in prison so So what we're looking for is straight north from here, but first we want to we're going to duck back talk to a couple people. Dog tags north of here on an old battlefield. Doctor's bag. So we got another doctor's bag from him. 
<clears throat> and that's for the dog tags that we got up here. Okay. Back in ye old Petrigal Springs. So Nathan had told us to meet him back in the storeroom when we get back. Hey, what's up? Listen, I I know I messed up, like, big time. He stole a weapon prototype from SBC. If you guys hadn't come along, I'd probably be in a prison cell right now, and my parents wouldn't even know what had happened to me. That's like the worst thing that can happen to a scaver. A family member goes off to find supplies or whatever. And they just never come back. Like the Deadlands swallowed them up. I can't believe that I almost did that to my mom and dad after they gave up so much to keep me away from that life. I want you to have this. And please, don't tell my parents I got locked up. You got stone handgun. This is a good weapon. The stone gear, as we start finding it, um, most of the other stone gear is going to be in abandoned Elohim temples. Um... The stone handgun is, all stone weapons are tier 4, they, they have a good magic bonus attached to them, and they have a passive ability where if you use a regular or some kind of a physical attack with them, there's like an 8% chance that it'll knock the enemy down and they'll lose a turn. So overall, just good weapon. They're heavy though. Busted! I knew something had happened. The way you snuck in here looking so guilty after you were gone for so long. Wait till mom and dad find out. Aw, oh, crap. Come on, Neela. Please don't tell them. Could you just let him slide this one time? Trust me, he's learned his lesson. Hmm. Well, okay. But only if you do something for me. I want you to let me come along with you. Say what? Nathan is spending too much time out there on his own. If I can come with you, then he won't have to work so hard to find new stuff for our parents to sell. Sure thing, Neela. Glad to have you. Thank you, Nolan. That's the second time you guys have saved my family. Well, I guess that about says it all, huh? I'm sure I'll see you on the road, but from now on, I'm going to stay in the Deadlands where it's safe. <laughs> oh, and before I forget, while I was back west, I managed to score a big stash of GMI gear. You know, the Garen Military Institute. Anyway, if you want to take a look at anything, just let me know. My dad would kill me if he knew I was giving you such a great deal. So now he's got upgraded armor, knife, shotgun, handgun. Um, all generic tier 3 stuff. Um, so, nice little upgrade, but we don't need any of it right now, so, but we got the real prize, which is, we got Neela, so we're gonna give Neela this stone handgun immediately, look at that ridiculous boost to her abilities, oh, so beautiful, give her the backhand for a little extra power, hide armor, um, give her that. Bodyguard FG because she's kind of she's kind of frail, and we'll give her the Ember Charm, so she's got a nice little attack option. And Neela is pretty much going to become one of our new favorite people because Neela is a little she's a little weak, but she's a C type. She's our first C type that we've earned, and she is completely immune to radiation sickness and debilitate. We're going to get more hidden loot with her, even if she's not in the active party. Hey, Aeon, how's it going? Welcome, welcome. Um, even if Neela is not in the active party, just having her around, she'll spot more loot in broken drones, antique computers, things like any kind of tech that we scavenge. We're going to get extra items with Neela now. And then she's got a good mix of nice heal spells and debilitating spells that are actually pretty useful, even in boss fights and things. So, I hope you've had a great day, Aeon. <clears throat> welcome, welcome, welcome. 
we're just playing some more of Voltage Genesis, which you may or may not recall is the uh, little RPG that I made. It's available on the um, Itch.io store. Oh, it's you. Listen, I don't want to be a pest, but could you do me a solid? Next time, next chance we get, I need to stop at the Pan Panavinto checkpoint. Oh, it's nothing. I just need to talk to a guy out there. I'd go by myself, but things might be a bit tense with the gang, you know? Better safe than sorry. Watch this. Oh, that's right. I do remember you were going to watch the Sonic movie. I've never seen it. <laughs> I had thought about watching it, but then today was just super crazy. I've only actually I've only actually been home for about 25 minutes, 30 minutes, something like that. Um, I've been gone since nine or noon, noon today, so I was gone for like eight solid hours. It'll be fine, all right? Just come with me and let me talk to Virgil at the Panavinto checkpoint. Did you fall asleep and then woke up and now you can't get back to sleep? Or did you just miss me so much that you stayed awake? <laughs> yes capture card and stuff like that. You've heard of Estancia, right? The ruined town to the northeast? Yep, that's the place. I was talking to a couple of scavers that came through town the other day loaded down with stuff they got from there. We should check it out. But wait, if they just came from there, what makes you think there's going to be any supplies left to take? It's the HD60S. I was torn between the S and the S Plus, but I don't need the S Plus. When I looked at the comparisons, it didn't really, I mean, it's only like $15 more, but it was $15 more and the differences didn't really seem good to me. Like they didn't seem like anything I needed. So, and the, um, the 60 S they actually had in stock at the store. So when I finished up my stream or, or was it last night, I think it was last night before I started my stream. Um, I bought it and then they just had it ready for me this morning. So, were they? Are you going to tell me that I should have gotten the S Plus? Oh, God. <laughs> <coughs> Do you use a Mac? Because I know that's one of the things is like it works with Macs and the normal one doesn't, right? Oh, okay. Because we aren't looking for salvage. They told me they found a bunch of supply crates from Alton Defense Solutions and Shield Blue Corporation that were still sealed up. Okay. Still not seeing how this is going to help us, Neela. If the crates were still sealed, then that means the resupply forms were probably in the crates. Just like the Conag stuff in Jalumare. These big companies will only do business with you if you have licenses and contracts and things. But we could just use the info on the forms to order stuff. And then you'll be able to stock stuff from ADS and SBC. Sounds great. So you're in? Uh, yeah. Sure, sounds good to me. We'll head that way as soon as we get a chance. Alrighty. So now we can upgrade our, our shop a little more. And here's our, here's our little, uh, our dude man. Done pretty well for yourselves. So he's got three charms for us to choose from now, but later on he'll upgrade his his uh, his inventory a little more. So, well, I'm looking forward to setting it up and getting it going and and expanding my library of games that I can play. I think it'll be a lot of fun. I'm just looking at my SNES Mini and I'm just thinking of all the fun fun. Uh, 90s RPGs I'm gonna play. It's gonna be so great. I'm gonna be doing Earthbound and Secret of Mana and Breath of Fire and all sorts of good shit. It's gonna be great. I think Breath well Breath of Fire is not on the mini, but it's on the Switch, the um the little SNES online app for the Switch. So I'm gonna be playing it on there. It's gonna be awesome. So anyway, now we got Neela. Um, 
We're gonna keep Stark in the party for now. Actually, we're gonna we're gonna stick with this setup for now. But I am gonna save. I see. Ever so slightly less delay, which is a pretty big thing since I rely on the sound through my capture card when playing games. So is that something where like it's running through your capture card instead of just like through your speakers? Because like for me, I've got it picking up the sound through the game, but then I just have like my regular speakers and that's what I'm listening to the game through. So is yours just like it's it's basically coming into your headphones through your capture card or... <clears throat> I actually bought a really nice set of Razer headphones that were absolute garbage. Like, I, they tell me they're nice. They were like $100 and they never really worked, so I returned them. I wasn't really happy with the headphones anyway because I don't play. Okay. I don't play a lot of games with headphones. Well, I, I don't play games with headphones. Um... I don't like not being able to hear what's going on around me, and um, when I'm playing like indie horror games and things, which I've actually talked about it in a couple of my reviews where I've played indie horror games that have jump scares, where the jump scare is like a blast of sound, and I've actually complained about that in a couple of my reviews that I don't like that because if I had headphones on or if my speakers were turned up, it could actually damage my hearing. So that's one of the things is like, especially when I'm playing indie games, I never want headphones in if I don't know the game ahead of time because I don't know when they're going to like blow something up in my ear. So for me, it's just easier to just play like this. That's true. That's true. That's why you can't do the sing redeems, right? You say you won't sing until you move out. <laughs> Investigate. So on the flip side, anybody who's watching, just know that when Aeon gets his own place, he will do Channel Point Song Redeems. <laughs> Uh-oh. So we found the crashed Zeppelin, and it looks like the main cabin was ripped open by an animal. Oh, that's true. You've got your crazy stream. That's true. I was telling Calrea about that. Crap, looks like we got company. So I have a question. I'm assuming... Is that something that you have to set up through um, Streamlabs or OBS where it adds it adds time to a timer because of subs and, and bits? Or are you just doing it in your head as, as stuff gets added? Hey you, the salvage is ours. You better get lost if you know what's good for you. GF wanted to watch something and I figured my, yeah, that sounds good to me. <coughs> So the name of the game here is going to be keeping our HP up because these guys, um, there's going to be waves of enemies that we have to fight and we can walk away after the first fight, but if we do, we won't get all of the, um, the fat loot that we want. So in order to get all of the, the loot and stuff, we need to, we need to fight them all. Okay. That's cool. That's cool. I really need to sit down and like mess around with the OBS or with Streamlabs or whatever. Um, when I first started streaming, I was so excited to get my camera up and working and everything. And I tried to mess around with it a little bit, but I just wasn't, I didn't have the patience. I wanted to start streaming now. And Twitch Studios worked. And then I just kept using it <laughs> because it was like, you know, I could spend my time off learning how to use this or... I could just do some streams. <laughs> so, <laughs> looks like some scabbers caught wind of the crash. If we stick around, I'm pretty sure we'll end up having to fight more. Well, after searching for nearly an hour, you locate what appears to be the Zeppelin's flight recorder. That tech there, it looks valuable. Hand it over.
Gotcha, gotcha. Oof. No. Scavers are no joke because they have really good items that they use against you. Probably should have had Gregory use um, recovery instead of that. That's not going to heal me enough. I need to kill her like ASA. I'm sorry. I need to incapacitate her quick. Oh, good drops. Might not have been able to steal anything, but... Searching for several hours, there do not appear to be any survivors, nor are there any bodies. However, there are several tra sets of tracks leading to the east. This seems strange. Even if the wildlife got here first, wouldn't there be pieces of people left? You're right. You'd think we'd have found at least one person, and these tracks are headed east towards Ensenada. Perhaps the Dead Handers came and rescued the survivors. I don't know, Gregory. The Dead Handers aren't really the rescuing type. That hurts, bro. We are tree huggers, you know. Uh, Stark is a Dead Hander, for anybody who's watching. Either way, if there were survivors, then we need to let Amelia know. You know, I can't believe I'm saying this, but do you want to maybe head to Ensenada? It's just east of here. Could be we can get more information about what happened. Hey, where do you think you're going? Yo, we were just leaving. Feel free to take whatever you want from the wreckage. Yeah, right. Now that you've gotten all the good stuff? I don't think so. Hand it over now. It is RPG Maker as fuck. But, in my own defense, I spent like three and a half years on weekends making it and it is like a fully developed game it's not like a lot of i mean i'm not saying that it's god's gift to rpgs or anything like that like it's obviously an rpg maker game but i paid out of pocket a lot of money to have custom artwork custom enemies done and you know i i i, I put some work into this and the game is about 20 25 hours long which is longer than most rpg maker games out there <coughs> so I think it's fun. I've played it. I've played through it several times. I mean, that's that's the key, right? I mean, if I made it and I've played it six times and enjoyed it every time, then I'm happy at the end of the day. Yeah, that was something that I would have liked to pay somebody to do faces, but oh, Gregory. But if I did that, if I did pay somebody to do faces, I would want to do faces for all the different emotions. And that would have gotten really, really pricey really fast. I'm going to lose this fight. <laughs> um, it would have gotten really expensive really fast because there's... Um, there's like 16 playable characters in this game. <laughs> so even if I was just to do like four basic faces for each one, that's 64 faces that I'd have to pay someone to draw. And it would have been like probably in the 800 to a thousand dollar range for somebody to do like good faces and i just couldn't justify it because i mean i was i'm not rich <laughs> so i had to i had to kind of pick and choose if i was to ever do like a um because there is some stuff that i actually cut from this game that i didn't get to do um some of it pretty significant stuff so if I was to ever go back and do like a director's cut type thing, there's a few things that I would change and that's definitely one of them. Is I would add, um, I would definitely add <clears throat> um, facial expressions for everybody and like custom art for everybody. But yeah, the game is it's about it's about 20, 25 hours long. It's got, I can tell you because I've got the stuff here. Uh, quests and story points. It's got, because I have it on an Excel sheet, 154 quests slash story points in the game. So there's there's a lot to do. It just doesn't look super pretty while you're doing it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it was it was definitely 
it was hard for me. Um, I'm not gonna lie. Um, but at the end of the day, I figured, I figured, you know, a lot of people will. S I had to pick and choose, and I figured a lot of people are gonna skip through a lot of the dialogue and not really care. Um, but you're gonna have to look at the monsters constantly, so that was my main thing. Was I wanted the monsters to kind of look nice? But I do know that a lot of people will see it and they'll judge it based on the way it looks. Um, and I can't really, I can only do so much about that. <laughs> <clears throat> the next game, which I, I had started planning it back in January, and then I got really into the streaming and didn't really do anything with it, but the next game I want to make, I'm actually going to lean really heavily into the kind of generic RPG Maker stuff, like instead of trying to kind of go over the top with, with art, I want it to be very generic because the idea is that the game is going to actually be a series of mini-adventures that a bunch of people are playing a game of D&D, basically. Um, so you're going to have, you're going to have, it's going to be like very straightforward, generic, Goblin 1, Goblin 2, Goblin 3, four hit point damage with a dagger, you know, type stuff. Like I, I pretty much went through the original player's handbook for D&D 3.5 and then created like weapon damage calculations for all the basic weapons and picked out the spells that most people would want and that kind of thing. <coughs> so eventually I'm probably going to stream, if I get to the point where I'm actually getting a little bit of income from streaming so that Calrea will let me stream more often, um, I would like to stream at least one day a week just me actually like working on game development stuff. Um, I'm also planning to sit down and learn the Unreal Engine at some point. Um, which I, I feel like I could do, but I want to do it as something where I've got two monitors and I'm looking over here and I'm looking over here and you guys can see what I'm doing. So it's like we're learning Unreal Engine together. I think it'd be fun and it would be nice for me because whenever I'm doing dev work, I need somebody to bounce ideas off of and it would be nice, even if nobody's responding to me, to be able to just kind of like talk to the camera and just get my ideas out in the air as I'm working. I think it would help make me a lot more productive. That's cool. Is it so is it an RPG maker game? You should share it. <coughs> you should put it up on itch.io and then send it to me and I can do an indie game review of it. It'll be awesome. It'll be a nice, nice little crossover. We actually don't want to come in. We just wanted to talk to Zebulon Gilkos. Can you call him for us? Jeez, Nolan. You can't just show up and expect the Ace of Spades to come roll out the red carpet. You don't get to decide when to talk to the boss. Right. You pray he never comes looking for you. Well, now, I don't know. Do I know that? The story of that third party member in the JRPG that was just avenging a grandfather and then hangs out with the rest of the party for some reason. You know, that party member. I like that party member. That's Stark, the guy with the pink mohawk in our party. He's a member of this gang and he was he actually has a really compelling storyline. If I'm being honest, I think his story, like when his story arc completed in the game for the first time, I'm pretty sure Calrea cried a little bit. But you actually meet Stark. You go to a dead hander hideout that's like an old abandoned restaurant. And he was cheating in a game of poker and got sh like they caught him and they shot him in the stomach. And they're basically like, nobody help him because he, he deserves it. And if you have the correct items to heal him, he's just basically like, well, it's not safe for me any anymore, so I guess I'll come with you. <laughs> And he just latches onto the party and he's constantly like throwing in extra little jabs and things. And he's kind of a goofy character because unless you're really invested in the meta of the game, he's not a good character. If you like meta stuff, he's a great character. But the main reason he's there is just he got shot and then you, and you gave him some band-aids. So now he's better and he wants to be your friend. <laughs> And Stark is absolutely my favorite character. <clears throat> I've been hearing about a crew out of that new settlement east of here. 
You match the description, and the way I hear it, you're pretty tough. So, maybe you're exactly what I've been waiting for. You're about the crash Zeppelin, aren't you? Well, don't worry. The survivors are being kept here safe and sound. I will say, too, that part of the reason that the, that the characters looked so similar in that first little exchange, the purple-haired people, is because they're all scavers, and they're just, it's like a generic enemy, and I just have like a generic male scaver and female scaver that I intentionally made look alike because they're just no-name scavers. Um, <clears throat> That's cool. I want to play it. I want to play it. Let me play it, Aeon, please. Take this letter and give it to whoever's in charge at the Zephyr Airways office. I'd consider it a personal favor. You got letter to Amelia. Finish it now. <laughs> and feel free to look around Ensenada if you like. You've done more to help our people than most of my underlings lately. Just know that if you abuse my good nature, I will find a creative way to express my displeasure. That's a promise. So because throughout the game, I've been doing all these little side quests and things to help out the dead handers, I've been slowly building up my reputation with the group, so now I'm allowed in. If I didn't have Stark in the party, I would not be able to get into Ensenada, ever. Um, because Stark unlo helping Stark unlo unlocks a lot of um, interactions with various dead handers, which not only gives you access to really good gear and items, but it also gives you a lot of lore to the backstory of the world. <clears throat> Pretty nice, huh? There's a layer of plasteel under the ground to prevent water from being lost, and we've rigged up solar panels to power the lights in here. We all take turns working the greenhouse. Zebulon says it's important for all of us to know how to grow food in case something happens and we have to rebuild. From what I hear, we weren't always farmers, but after Monolito, we realized we had to be smarter about food. Most of the food for the dead handers comes from here. The canned go goods we steal from the caravans is saved in case we ever need to hole up in the mountains. So the dead handers are portrayed as basically like this huge biker gang that just goes around terrorizing the Deadlands and stealing from everybody. And they actually have a nice little setup with greenhouses and all kinds of shit. Stuff, sorry. I know some, not everybody likes me casually swearing. I apologize. Um, all kinds of stuff just set up. And they actually have like a working society out here. But you find out that their backstory was that they were kind of living out here minding their own business. And the Moraymen military came in and kicked them out of where they were living. And it was like a huge war and a lot of them got killed. So now they're essentially trying to just be as much of a thorn in the side of the Moraymen military as they can. But really they just want to be left alone. Like that's, it's, it's, it's an interesting dynamic that they have going. Most of the food here is pretty standard stuff, but you've got to try the Kahuna Burger. They're huge. The Kahuna Burger is amazing. I always pack a few for when I'm going on a long trip. They keep pretty well. Hello, dear. I don't believe I've seen you around. So tell me, are things out in the Deadlands as bad as they say? Yeah, it's pretty bad. The number of monsters is rising, and with the raids by the Deadhanders, it's hard to get troops and supplies to New Panavinto. Ha! I like you, boy. You don't beat around the bush. I'm glad to hear our young folks are making life hard for you Westerners after the Reclamation Army rolled over us the way they did 20 years ago. Regardless, you all look hungry, and if Zebulon says you can wander around here, then I'm obligated to sell you whatever you may need. Don't worry, I charge the same prices for everyone. What would you like to buy? <clears throat> so Aeon, in the interest of being a shameless plugger of things, um, I want to point out that if you look in my channel points, I do have three challenges going right now. One is significantly ahead of the others, but that is going to be my viewer's choice game for next Saturday night is whichever one of those wins. So with all of your hard-earned channel points, you can help contribute to the cause, and I will play either The Forest, Moonlighter, or Abzu next Saturday night. Hey, thank you, thank you, Overshot. It's so great to see you, man. I haven't I haven't seen you in a while. I hope you've been doing well. But I know it is you you're a you're a young lad who's still growing and you need 
you need all your sleep. So, absolutely. <clears throat> thank you for the thank you for the uh, the the kind wishes, sir. What? I have no money. I'm so poor. It really sucks. Cause the gear here is so good and I can't buy any of it. Sorry, but this table is for hearts only. Huh? Oh, hearts. The dead handers are made up of three groups, the clubs, the hearts, and the spades. The clubs and the spades each have an ace who calls the shots and an eight who acts as their lieutenant. The hearts just have a queen who has a say on any matters that affect the women of our crew. Wait, I thought Zebulon was in charge. Hey man, absolutely. I'll be back at it Wednesday during the day because I've switched my schedule around. So for me, it'll be 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, so for you, I guess that would be like 5 p.m. I'll be doing a four-hour stream of The Last Remnant. So maybe I'll see you then. Um, otherwise, my schedule is on my page. So have a good evening, sir. She refuses to meet your gaze. Oh, hey, it's my saviors. Glad to see you made it back safely. Did the guards give you any trouble? Are you kidding? I had the meeting out of my hand. They even gave me this gun. Said one of my colleagues left it there a while back. You got Black Arnold. That's a pretty sweet revolver. Imperial Senate issue, if I'm not mistaken. But you guys got me out of a bad jam, so it's yours. I ditched the clothes you gave me back in Altuza's grave. Sorry, but I didn't want to get caught wearing them out here. My luck, one of the guys would pop me thinking I was a spy from Garen. By the way, I've been telling everyone how you helped me out back in Eastside. The least I could do is help you build your rep with the gang after you saved me. Anyways, you guys take it easy. Noodle and Man Saloon, now under new management. No guns allowed. So, fun, fun American history thing for you, Aeon, if that interests you and if you're still listening. The Dead Handers are actually based on a real American Old West story about the dead man's hand. So you should look that up. You should, if you, if you have Wiki, if you're interested, um, it's a story of, um, I believe it was Wild Bill Hickok was shot in a saloon over a game of poker. And at the time he was holding a hand of cards, which people differ about what the cards were but the generally accepted notion is that he had two pairs he had black aces and black eights and a queen of hearts as his whole card and because his hand was very good he was accused of cheating and they shot him over it and it's considered to be a bad luck hand in um in poker now so that's, that's where the Dead Handers get their name from. And their logo, I actually had somebody draw it up. This is like a free show and tell. Hang on. I actually had somebody draw up the logo. If I can find it. There you go. So that's like the the logo for the Dead Handers. Is um, it's actually a skull with a red mohawk and the dead man's hand. And this is the this is the Queen of Hearts, and it's obscured because the Queen of Hearts is the only character that you don't that is not identified as such in this game. Um, so her identity is a secret, but you do you can talk to her in the game. You just don't know who she is. So, yeah. And the skull is always drawn facing to the left because that's where the real danger comes from. They all live in the Deadlands, which is this irradiated desert that stretches east across the country. 
but the dead land, the dead handers are are adept at living in the deadlands. That's not where the danger comes from. The danger comes from the civilized lands out west. So they always that's their little saying is they they say keep an eye to the west when that's what they mean when they when you say watch your back or you know stay out of trouble. They say keep an eye to the west and they always they always draw their logo so that the skull is facing left as though it's looking to the west. <clears throat> so interesting little bit of lore there. Anyway. <laughs> Got some more lore to get while we're here. I gotta check the rest of the ropes before nightfall. If you don't mind me asking, why do the dead handers hang those ropes everywhere? You seriously don't know? Wow. There's an evil spirit lurking in the dead forest to the east. I heard it used to be some sort of forest god, but when the bombs fell, it went crazy. Okay. It hates mankind with a burning passion and it sends its minions to steal away children and drag them back into the woods, never to be seen again. But long ago, one brave dead hander went into the woods. Everyone thought he was dead, but apparently he came back three years later saying he had survived in the woods by making rope talismans to protect himself. Ever since then, we hang knotted ropes containing bones and other mystical talismans over our windows and doors to keep the tall fellow away. <laughs> The tall fellow. <laughs> Laugh if you want, but we haven't lost a single kid to that monster in over 50 years. Heh, <laughs> I hope he sits in his forest and starves. He's supposed to be like the Slender Man, but he's the tall fellow. And the tall fellow is real, I'm here to tell you. He is real and he is dangerous. <laughs> a photo of a group of men wearing reclamation gear. Wait, what's this? You got dusty dog tags. Nice little item there. Looks like the wreckage of an old stinger drone. Scrap metal. Hang on, there's something else here worth taking. Jump drive. Back off before I make you regret it. Did the other guards give you a hard time? Listen, don't let all the cloak and dagger stuff fool you. Back before the war, the military built a whole city into the mountains. Inside these caves is a pre-war hospital, a school, even a gymnasium. Ever since we lost most of the folks living at Montalito, people have been leery of letting outsiders near our kids or our elderly. Why is that? Why, what happened at Montalito? You really don't know? I guess they leave that, that part out, huh? All I'm going to say is there's a reason you don't see too many old folks repping dead hander colors. Anyway, rules are rules. Can't let you in. Sorry. Yeah, the Moraman military showed up in there. It was a military installation that had been abandoned during the war. And the dead handers were using it as like their home base. And the military showed up and basically told them all to GTFO. And when the dead handers refused because they had lots of old people and kids and they didn't want to go out into the dead, the dead lands to die the military started bombing the place and basically kicked them all out. So anybody who didn't get killed in the fighting was forcibly ejected from the area. And then the only other major settlement they had was in Sonata. And it was like a bunch of orphans, like war orphans and old people in a forced march across a radioactive desert. And most of them died along the way. So that's why the uh, dead handers hate Marema. Uh, there's Zach and Casey, but I don't think we can handle their quest just yet. <coughs> you know, maybe we should talk to the captain to see if he has any work for us. Do you have some kind of emergency you need help with? If not, I'll have to ask you to come back later. Captain! We just received a distress call from our men in the old city. It sounded like they were in trouble, but before I could get the whole message, the signal was cut off. Hmm, how quickly can we get more men over there? 
I radioed our recon team, but it appears they ran into some trouble as well. It'll be at least a day before they can resupply and get to old Panavito. You there. You were here looking for work, correct? Y yes that's right. Captain, you can't thank sending these people. Return to your post now. Keep listening for any more signals from our men in the ruins. Yes, sir. As I was saying, we recently received reports that a dragon was seen in the ruins of old Panavinto. A dragon? Indeed. We do not know how it made it here from Garen, but with people beginning to move back into the old city, apparently it has discovered a new food source. I dispatched a pair of hunters to deal with it, but it appears they have run into some trouble. I would like for you to go find them and offer any assistance they may need. In exchange, you will be paid handsomely. The Hunter's Guild rewards those who assist in its mission of maintaining order. What do you think, Nolan? I don't know. Dragon? I know, but they need our help. We can't say no. I guess you're right. Excellent. When they arrived in Old Panavinto, our men reported they had set up a base camp inside an old ruined building on the city's outskirts. I'd recommend you begin there. Da, 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 da. Oh. Originally designed by Aloise Black Arnold, members of the Garen Imperial Senate often carry So Black Arnold is a nice revolver, but we got the Malik, so or the Malik, however you want to pronounce it, so we don't we're not gonna switch. Malik is too good. I could keep that I could keep that gun on Stark until he gets to his final storyline point because he gets a special a special handgun that only he can use. But up till then. I could keep this Malik on him for the whole game, and he'd be fine. <clears throat> Who are you? The Hunter's Guild sent us. They said you called for help, but that your signal was cut off. The other hunters were too far away, so the captain asked us to assist. I see. My name is Isaiah, and that's Corbett over there. We're hunters from Jaeger here on special assignment. Ah! You're hurt. What happened to you? I... I'll be okay. We were sent here because the people at the casino reported seeing a dragon. Corbett is a famous dragon slayer, so it should have been no problem. But I got in the way. Corbett was able to get me to safety, but I can't travel far with this injury. When I sent the SOS, Corbett got mad and broke the radio. That's it. I'm sick of waiting around here. You guys can stay and babysit the rookie. I'm going to go do my thing. Are you sure that's wise? You were already defeated once. Hey, watch it. I didn't lose, alright? The kid just got in the way, that's all. I'll be back. That dragon's done for. <clears throat> Corbett grabbed his gear and left. He seems like an interesting person. He may be a bit rough around the edges, but Corbett is a great hunter. I'm lucky to... Ah! Falls down. Isaiah collapsed to the ground. This wound is pretty bad. I've done what I can to bind it, but without further attention, it will probably get infected. Corbett has been gone for quite a while. I'll be alright. Please, go after Master Corbett. If something were to happen to him, I would never forgive myself. So originally, you actually had to choose to either stay and tend to Isaiah or go after Corbett, and whichever one you didn't go, you didn't help, would die. Isaiah, he, we don't, that, they don't die now. Isaiah, he's the one who ran off. We need to tend to your injury first and foremost. I understand that you're worried about Corbett, but there's no way I can leave you here in this condition. Working carefully, Bridget was able to treat Isaiah's wound, and he began to recover. Several hours go by. How are you feeling, Isaiah? Much better, thank you. However, Corbett still has not returned. Please, I beg of you, can we go and find him? I am genuinely concerned. I never would have thought he'd be gone this long. <clears throat> sure thing, Isaiah. Let's go find him. 
I know I'm just a trainee, but I will do my best to uphold the honor of the guild. The Dragon's Lair is just to the south. In that case, we should make our way there as quickly as possible. This thing is pretty busted, but if I had a pipe wrench, I could at least get the battery out. Gotta go get a pipe wrench then. Need a crowbar for that. Is there anything in here? I can't remember. Nope. His agility is one. Dear God. Oh, he's a cute juvenile green dragon. He's a cutie. So Consecrate is going to cause him to lose some of his max health every turn as a uh, damage over time thing. It'll last from 2 to 5 rounds. So he'll lose somewhere between 10 and 25% of his max health. This will be an easy fight though. He, he'll, he'll be dead at the end of this round. Most of the boss fights only last, if, if a boss fight lasts more than 5 rounds, you are not supposed to be fighting them yet. Or you're doing something really wrong. Let's out a roar. Well, he can roar all he likes. He's dead now. So that attack seems a little powerful, and it is that that move, Focus Strike. You only can use that if you have the pickaxe, the hooked axe, or the sledgehammer equipped, and it uses up a huge chunk of your AP. Um, and it does damage based on the type of damage that the weapon does. So it just happens that the dragon is weak against piercing, so the pickaxe does piercing damage. That's why it's that's why it's so ridiculously overpowered of a move. Was that the dragon you fought earlier? I believe so, yes. <clears throat> but where's Corbett? You don't think <gasps> That's right, I almost forgot. I don't see him anywhere. Corbett? Master Corbett! I'm sure he's around here somewhere. So. Looks like the wreckage of an old Stinger drone. Hang on, there's something else here worth taking. Those jump drives are worth good money. So. <gasps> I got confused for a second. I forgot I had uh, redone this building. I was like, wait, where am I? <laughs> Corbett! Master Corbett, we must get you back to headquarters immediately. Ugh. Don't need your help, rookie. <clears throat> Lucky I softens him up for you. That's nice. I I think he may be delirious from his injuries. We should get him to a doctor. I say we leave him here. Wh what? I believe he's making a joke. Don't worry, we'll help you get him back to town. The party hurried Corbett back to the Hunter's Guild's office in New Pinevinto. We did it. I gotta turn the fan on. It's super hot in here. And open a window. I'm a really good voice actor. They all sound exactly the same. <laughs> but thank you, Voltaire. I appreciate it. I just finished filing my report to HQ. They have approved for me to give you a sizable sum as payment for your assistance. He ain't kidding. The, uh, the Hunter's Guild quests pay ridiculous money. The Hunter Captain handed over 5,000 bolts. How's Corbett? Corbett has suffered several serious injuries, and the amount of time it took for him to receive medical attention has made his situation much worse. 
However, I understand from your report that this was entirely Corbett's fault. Instead of staying and ensuring the safety of the trainee under his watch, he stormed off and was subsequently injured. I must say, I am somewhat surprised. His reputation would have me believe such a small dragon would have proven no match for him. If you really do think I'm a good voice actor, Voltaire, you should uh, recommend me to any of your friends you know that need voice acting done. Um, I can do it, and I'll do it for cheap. <laughs> In any case, Trainee Isaiah, you have made the Hunter's Guild proud. In spite of the poor decisions made by your superior, you followed operating procedures and made contact to request additional support. Too many hunters would rather go out and face a threat alone, thinking that this will somehow elevate their own position in the guild. However, we must always place the mission above our own vanity. I am certain that if you had not sent your SOS, both you and Corbett would be dead. Well done. Thank you, sir. You are dismissed, Isaiah. Go see the doctor about your injuries. Thank you for everything. Should have taken his gear. <laughs> Isaiah has left the party. Now then, I'll cut right to the chase. You did fine work out there. The Hunter's Guild has too few people they can trust in the Deadlands, and I have been asked to make you a proposal. A proposal? You told me you were from a new settlement out east. The Hunter's Guild would like to establish a secondary base of operations in your town. You mean you want to put a Hunter's Guild in Petrigal Springs? Indeed. In exchange for allowing us access to your settlement, we will provide an additional security presence for your fledgling town. Also, as business partners of the Hunter's Guild, we may occasionally request your assistance with other unusual problems, for which you will, of course, be generously compensated. Seems like an easy yes to me. Excellent. In that case, I will send word to my superiors. Expect our people within the week. Several days go by, and the Hunter's Guild has moved into one of the buildings on the south end of town. Maybe I should check it out when I get a chance. So now, we have our very own Hunter's Guild, and it's Isaiah! Hello, the captain reassigned me to your town. He said he wanted to send the best people he had to Petrigal Springs. I'm going to keep training. I can't let myself grow apathetic now. So this was a previously abandoned building that's now been converted into a big old hunter's guild. Complete with lore. Someone left this tablet on. Looks like they were watching recordings of a fighter with a spear. Watch the video. Based on his armor, it's safe to say the fighter was a member of the Fide Defensor. Word is they're the best around when it comes to end shield combat. This guy won every round, even against... Wait, is that Corbett? This book is about the history of the Hunter's Guild. While the area around Jaeger was long known to be a fertile hunting ground for the wealthy elites of Garen, it was not until the year 8911 PF that the guild was formed in response to Garen's attempt to enact... Dot, dot, dot. Oh, we got a bounty. Bounty has already been posted. Reading the request, it seems to be from the techie couple in the old lab. Three pre-war CPUs. Okay, we got all kinds of good stuff to do. So, Voltaire, I hope that you are having a fantastic night. And I would like, if I have not done so in the past, to direct your attention to my channel points where you will find three challenges that you can donate points to. If one of those games is a game you would like to see me play next Saturday night for a viewer's choice game, um, whichever game gets to 5,000 channel points first wins and the losing games, your points will be refunded back to you. Um, if nobody reaches 5,000, then the one that has the most points, 7 p.m. next Saturday automatically wins. So right now it's looking like Abzu, but it's not too late to swing the, uh, the pendulum towards Moonlighter or the Forest if you'd rather see me play those. Just want to throw that out there. <clears throat> I think, if I'm not mistaken, that we already have the pre-war CPUs. Yep, we got five of them. We earned a bunch of them going through the Trabanco Mountains. Hey, are you here about the bounty? 
Basically, my wife and I were thinking if we can get the parts, we could set up some motion detectors outside the town. Most of the stuff we need is pretty standard, so if you could bring us three pre-war CPUs, I think we'll be set. You already have three of them? That's great! This will be a huge help to the Hunter's Guild. They even chipped in for the reward on this bounty. 8,000 experience points? Hell to the yeah. Uh... <clears throat> and I think I need to grab some of this stuff. That's right, I remember Stark telling me he'd unlocked this. Nice, copper bracelet. Three MREs and a bottle of fire water. Nice, nice, nice. All nice. <clears throat> so, we can do Neela's quest now. Which is just basically running up here to Estancia and looking for... Um, old loot boxes containing order forms. Need a crowbar to pop the trunk on that uh, car. The boot, I'm sorry. Dang it, these windows are all shatterproof. Uh-oh. Cure yourself, brother. So, you can actually get into this town multiple ways based on the direction you're facing when you come in. So, <laughs> you won't stand a chance against my new bot. Well, the thing is, brother, you die now. Try and steal a pickaxe. Oof. Oh, this is gonna suck. Oh. I thought that was gonna just straight out kill me. Oh, well, I got the pickaxe anyway, so I'm good. privacy <laughs> he was doing a wee <clears throat> I don't want to do any I don't want to do any voices anymore because Voltaire is going to make fun of me Also because I'm losing my voice from screaming at the TV last night. <laughs> I, I'll i never forgive you for this. <laughs> Poor guy. I think we made him uh, pee on himself a little bit, if I'm being honest. I think he had an accident. Oh, well, I guess I should probably point out that the um, the challenges only pop up if you're on your computer for some reason. I don't know why they don't pop up when you're using your phone, but they don't. So if you want to if you want to put points into that, I'm not crazy. It's just that um, got to be on your got to be on your computer for some reason. Oh, free snap crackle pop there.
We don't have a crowbar yet, so we can't get into all of this. We'll have to go to Mateo before we can get a crowbar, so we'll have to, like, finish the first major storyline arc, and then when we return back to the mainland, we should be able to get into all this stuff. Oh, but we can get into this now, because we have a pickaxe. So anytime you see these these buildings or walls that have these big cracks right here, if you have a pickaxe in your inventory, you can actually smash a lot of them open. Which will give you access to areas you'd not otherwise have access to. Macho clothes. Can't get into that yet. Oh. Rubber glove. Hmm. So we can't get into the safe, unfortunately. We'll have to come back for that. There's a horrible smell coming from inside. You see all the blood and the drag marks. There's probably a probably definitely a dead body in there. You got ADS order forms. That's one down. Now we just need to find order forms for SBC. Darn, doesn't look like there's any here. Okay. That loot. And now... We gotta go in the northwest corner. Boom. And then we come over here. Oh. tech magazine there's a headline on the cover that reads immaculate concepts an interview with the ceo of immaculate military industries it's a weird little graphical bug there that shouldn't be there this computer is still hooked up to a power source read sirens all employees this is not a drill please remain in your assigned work area until roll call is complete immediately after the completion of roll call all staff are to exit the premises uh oh. To all employees. Roll call has been completed. All staff are to exit the building in an orderly fashion and are not to return to work until they are called in by their direct supervisor. To Anna. File corrupted. You got SBC order forms. Okay, so ultra secret. There's probably like a hundred of these potted plants in the game. And there's one in the intro area that's got an item that lets you never get attacked by enemies when it's equipped. And then there's every other plant in the game says it's fake or a vibrant healthy plant with the exception of this one, which says it's fake. Wait, what's this? And there's a scabber stash hidden in the plant. So. There you go. Super secret, y'all.
Hope y'all were paying attention because I'm not going to tell you again. Ball. Hey, Dolan. Glad you came by. With all the excitement, I forgot to get those forms from you. Oh, right. Here you go. Handed over the order forms. Great, thanks. My mom and dad will fill these out right away. I can't wait to get some new inventory. A few days go by. Hey, Neela, how's it going? I heard your dad went out to New Panavinto to pick up that shipment yesterday. That's right. We were up all night getting the, cell the shelves set up. Go on, check it out. Starting to look like an actual shop. Holy crap. I heard from a friend in New Pontevinto that this place had some gear, some good gear. At first I didn't believe him, but man am I glad I came out here. It's a hike, sure, but this is some of the best gear in Marema. Huh? Oh, it's you. I was wondering, do you know if the owner's daughter has a boyfriend? I see her hanging out with you a lot. So, previously, he was here complaining. He This this guy has his own little miniature storyline. The first time you, you come here and talk to him, he's complaining because he was saying that he had heard there was a shop out here and he was going to rob the place, but they didn't have anything good. And then once you finish the first inventory upgrade quest, he's like, I was about, he goes, I was about to write this place off. And then they got some better gear. Maybe if I stick around long enough, they'll get some really good stuff. <laughs> and now he's he's been here long enough. He's starting to develop a crush on Neela. <clears throat> so this oh we get a machete, a machete. We need a machete. Banded tapper. Hmm. Well. <laughs> there goes all my money, y'all. Sell some stuff real quick. So we've done we've done our wasp stinger quest, so we can turn that in. We can sell these. Sell these, sell that, that. We need tapered wings. Um, I think we need those still. Sell that, sell scrap metal, sell that. Look at all the freaking money. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. It is in fact voltage. Hello, hello, hi, Fell. I just realized you came in. You are literally the only person that gets excited for voltage. So, welcome, sir. Yes, we are, in fact, playing Voltage. Um, we have unlocked a new character. We now have Neela, who you may remember from the intro in the first, the first episode. Um, her parents run the shop, and her brother got locked up in prison for trying to steal something from a shop out west, and we managed to get him out. And as thanks, she is, she, well, it's not as a way of thanks, um, basically she overheard her brother thanking us for getting him out of prison and she was going to squeal on him to her parents and we convinced her to not squeal on him if we let her come with us. So, because she wants to pay us back because we've saved her family twice now. So, how are you doing, Highfell? I hope you're having a great weekend so far.
Oh, we gotta do this. Why are you out here? So we, we actually talked to this lady before, and um, Divide by Zeros was telling me what to say to her, and he basically told me the wrong stuff. So, so I'm gonna say something good to her now. I have a pretty decent little spot here. That was pretty dumb. Say, would you want to buy this piece of land? I've got all the paperwork for the property. I did things legit, got the signatures and everything. Come on, make me an offer. So we can make her we can make her an offer of 1000 volts or 2000 volts. If we offer her 1000 volts, she will take it and we can rest here for free whenever we want and she will move to New Panavinto where she will sell us flashbangs for 750 volts and she will give us a free fang necklace, which normally costs a thousand volts anyway. She gives it to us as a thank you for buying the property. If we offer her 2,000, she will move to Pedregal Springs. She'll sell us the flashbangs at a discounted price and she gives us a unique item called Motla's Vambrace, which is what we want. Deal. See ya. So now this is our little house and we can rest here whenever we want. <clears throat> so now if we go back to Pedregal Springs and talk to her, she's right here. She's set up on the little park bench. Hey, how's it going? Not too bad. So I take it you didn't go back to New Panavinto? Are you kidding? This place is way better. I basically do all the same stuff I used to. Kill death wasps, help out on the farm. But now I have friends to do it with. You guys really changed my life. Please take this. Hopefully it'll keep you safe. Gee, thanks. Take care of yourself, okay? Will do. Have you heard of flashbangs? If you're interested, I only charge 600. Oh, I thought it was 675. So it's a 20% discount. <clears throat> so Motla's Van Brace is a really good item. Um, it gives you a nice boost to your attack and your defense, slight boost to resistance, um, and it gives you a move called Power Tackle, which is a nice um, physical option. So, I want to hold off on giving it to anybody though. Oh, and now that we've got more gear at the scaver shop, these guys have an upgraded gear. They have upgraded gear as well. So their stealth generators got better because they have better parts. And they now sell flashbangs as well. So. There we go. So unfortunately, it doesn't work on the phone, Highfell, but if you are watching me on your actual computer right now, you can um, look under the channel points and there's a, there's a set of three challenges, which are actually the selections for next week's Saturday Night Viewer's Choice game. So whichever one of those games gets to 5,000 channel points first, I will play it as next Saturday night's evening game. Um, the winning, the, the games that don't win, the points will be refunded to the people who didn't get them. Um, so don't, don't stress about it. But if any of those games look interesting to you particularly, um, I have not played Moonlighter on stream before. I have beaten the game, but I haven't streamed Moonlighter and I have not streamed Abzu. I have streamed The Forest quite a bit and I'm fairly far into the game. So that'll be a continuation. The other two will be new, like, one-off streams. So, just wanted to throw that out there.
Perhaps, but it's far more likely they belong to a deserter. I'm sorry to say I was at Monolito when the order came to clear it. The Deadhanders are right to hate us. Hopefully he was able to save some lives. Riot armor. I think I'm a high enough level for the next Hunter's Guild quest. Nope, not yet. Damn. Oh! It's just a bunch of trash. Oh, the build-up. The build-up. That was where the redhead was standing before, and she was saying she wouldn't let us down the alley because she accused us of being peeping toms. So now she has also moved to Pedregal Springs, and if we talk to her... We can actually get a little bonus reward, which you only get if you talk to her in Pedregal Springs long enough for her to accuse you of being a peeping Tom. Huh? It's you. But wait, does that mean... Oh man, I'm so sorry about before. I really did think you were a peeping Tom. People tell me I take my job too seriously, but that's a good thing, right? Um, listen, I'm really sorry. Here, let me give you this. You got Malachite Focus. I'm really sorry. Let's consider this a fresh start. So the Malachite Focus um, is a decent upgrade, but it's not as good as the fan, which we got for another quest. It does give us a group fire spell, but we don't need it because we just don't. It's more just treasure, honestly. So, anyway... We're going to start heading back to the, um, the place. <laughs> We're going to start heading back to, um, Aklapata Fortress so we can give Amelia that letter from the leader of the Dead Anders. Oh, but now that we've gotten a lot of lore, because we went to Ensenada, we've gotten a whole lot of Dead Hander lore, we can talk to this chick. I mean, I'm not a Dead Hander myself. But I've spent a lot of time with them lately. I was even at Ensenada not too long ago. <gasps> really? Well, that's amazing. What can you tell me about their new Ace of Spades? Like, what do the Deadhanders think of them? Think of him. How has he convinced them to give him a leadership position at his age? Tell me everything. Nolan and the Deadhander fanatic talked about Zebulon, Gaiokos, and the Deadhanders for a while. Huh. So they're still worried that the Moraymans are going to come wipe them out even after 20 years. It sounds like Zebulon is a forward-thinking man if he's got them avoiding fights and growing food. The question is, what's his end game? Is he trying to integrate into mainstream Marema or get them to lower their guard? Either way, the Senate will want to know about this. Um, just forget I said that, okay? As a little thank you gift, why don't you take this coin? I don't know where they came from, but I find them on, I mean, a lot of dead handers seem to have them. You got Skull Coin. Skull Coin! A collectible coin which bears an image of a skull, gifted by the wannabe dead hander at Xylaria Motel. Oof. That's gonna drop his resist, though. You know who will like this? Nila will like this. Nila needs all of those things attack, defense, and luck. No, she doesn't. She's garbage. Nobody cares about her. Well, whatever. It's an upgrade for everything for, for Nolan. Oh, we got to talk to this guy first, Stark. Stark? I'm surprised to see you here. I heard Eight of Spades was pretty upset with you. Oh, really? That's weird. I wonder why. <clears throat> Listen, Virgil. I was just wondering if you ever managed to find the thing we talked about before. Still haven't given up, huh? Well, listen, I got a little something, but it's not much to go on, and if you want me to keep digging, it'll cost you. Yeah, sure, of course. Hey, Nolan, I'm a bit light right now. Can you help me out? Give 1,000 volts. Awesome. Thanks a bunch, bud. Here you go, Virgil. Think this will be enough to get things rolling? Yeah, sure. But you better have a lot more on hand if I actually find it. This game is hard on my throat because I have to talk so much. 
What kind of an a-hole designs a game with this much dialogue in it? <laughs> okay, now we just have to let Virgil do his thing. If he contacts me again, I'll let you know. Um, Stark? What was that all about? I can't say anything just yet, but trust me, those were vaults well spent. Sure they were. Oh. Darn. Oh. And now that our rep with the dead handers has gone up, these guys are going to sell us their gear at way reduced prices. Yo, how's it going, Nolan? You want to buy anything? I mean, I say reduced prices. It's still super expensive, but it's not nearly as bad as it was. That good shit. Keep an eye to the west. <sighs> dead hander gear is very good. We like dead hander gear. So this is a great little meta thing because the names of these enemies is actually based on... See, there's the Sir. There's me, the Phenomenal Sir. This is actually the crew that I used to gank with in um, Dark Souls. This is, this is us, the Gank Academy. So I'm the Sir. Hot Sauce is uh, Tapatio, who used to play like a, a tanky boy. Corroded was basically the one that, that did all the killing for us. He was the good one. Um, this Corroded is actually Megami Mori, who is also a streamer now. He's one of the recommended streamers on my channel, so that's him. And then 420 is um, is uh, Bobby Mug 420. So he was he was our other player that we played with a lot. So this is and the. Um, and the, uh, the group that's camped out here are called the Disciples of Poison. And that's actually what the, um, that's the, um, the uh, Twitter channel that we used, or the Twitter page that we used to have that we would post our kills and stuff on when we were streaming. Because we would actually let people know, like, hey, we're ganking in Dark Souls right now. If you want to fight us, come to this area. So, just an interesting little meta thing there. This is not a hard fight. It's a hard fight the first time you come here, but at this point in the game, it's not meant to be difficult. It's meant to just be a way to unlock additional quests for them. Crap, our bots are all trashed. You got a thousand volts. It's gonna take a while to repair our bots. And it's all your fault. I mean, obviously they were gonna get smashed up a little bit, but you totaled all four of them. We'll need four new processing units just to get them running again. Sorry, you guys didn't exactly go easy on us either, you know. <laughs> well, that's true, but how am I supposed to tell a robot to take it easy on someone? Okay, so here's the deal. You guys go to Real Dara Valley, smash a bunch of those Model K bots, and fetch us four cracked processors. If you do, I'll make it worth your while. Sound good? Hmm, we'll have to see. Real Dara isn't exactly a short walk from here. So. 
which actually reminds me, we do need to go to Real Dara because we got to save Butler, right? Butler went missing. We got to find him. There's so many side quests. Oh, God. Keep forgetting stuff we need to do. Oh, oh, so many objectives. My mind is a whirl. So this is where we need to go. Riel Dara Valley. Is there a problem? This is not a nice place. Back during the war, the Garen Imperial Army was based here. The idea was to use this as a rally point for the reclamation forces, but, well, did something go wrong? Yeah, they ditched us. According to survivors, the Garen troops took all the supplies stored here, the food, tech, weapons, and evacuated. The Moraman troops tried to stop them. The Moraemans didn't try to stop them. They were being shot in their sleep. A few of them managed to get away, but Garen claims it was due to a miscommunication. On their way out, the Garanians activated a bunch of their warbots to guard their backs. The whole place is a death trap. Hmm. If that's the case, then perhaps we should leave. Cracked processor number times one. Hell yeah. There's some dark shit in the backstory of this game. Wow, people getting shot in their sleep, orphans, people being killed on death marches through the desert. Damn. I'm mean. Milkweed. Oof. Oof, so strong. Millipedes are no joke. They're very tough. They are tough customers. Sippies. Okay. Oh. Hey, buddy. Scented fan. me trying to steal money from the robot like steal electricity from it da, 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 
Very tough. Oof. He can he can dish it, but he sure can't take it. Man. This is another one of those ones where it's just like, oh, no one got a double hit. You're screwed, sir. Um it's like uh basically you can you can handle the fight when you're ready to handle the fight, and then it'll take a couple of rounds. But at lower levels, he's just gonna kill your whole party in one go, so. And for the most part, for the most part, the boss fights are not supposed to be huge slogs. It's supposed to be either you're strong enough to fight him or you're not. If you're not, then come back later. If you are, let's not drag this out. Let's not have a Final Fantasy IX Ozma situation going on. Um, yeah. It looked like that bot was guarding the area. Do you think that Butler might be near somewhere nearby? I certainly hope so. The quartermaster did say he was supposed to be around here somewhere. Plop. So, you were sent by the... He just pops up. So you were sent by the quartermaster. If your name is Butler and you're with the Trailblazers, then yeah, he sent us. Damn him. Now I owe my life to him and you. I... I'm sorry. Is everything all right? You don't seem happy that we saved you. I... am glad not to be dead. Eventually, I would have been found by that devil when my strength gave out, gave out. However, because you saved me, I now owe you a favor in kind. I mean, it's not that big of a deal. I'm more interested in how you were able to stay hidden from that bot. I would have assumed it could just use its scanners. It tried to. I was using my... what is the word? Cryokinesis? To lower my body temperature. It could not use its devilry to find me, so it could only wait. That's actually really smart. Bridget, you should learn how to do that too. If you are able to master the technique, I would recommend you use it sparingly. I believe I may lose a finger to the frost. Oh no! Why didn't you say anything? We need to get you to a doctor. <clears throat> I apologize. That was a poor attempt at humor. There will be no lasting damage to my body. I am hungry, however. I will need to return to FCP Bravo and resupply. When you find the time, please return to the Trailblazers camp to discuss how I can repay this life debt. I already told you, it's not that big of a deal. Don't worry about it, alright? Perhaps I simply place more value on human life than you do. Burn. In any case, the debt exists whether you acknowledge it or not. Please return to FCP Bravo soon. What was up with that guy? Jeez. Nolan, he was in a bit of a jam when we saved him. We should at least go and talk to him when things have settled down. Reusing the stealth gen does not... Oh, you know what? I bet I know how I could fix that. I could have it... Cure you of the status effect and then reapply it, and then that would reset the timer. Yeah. I just figured out how to fix something. I don't have my little notebook with me. It's downstairs right now. Hmm. I'm gonna have to remember to do that later, to fix that. <clears throat> um.
leaving a note for myself for the next time I do a bug fix so I can fix this. Pedro Gall Springs. Boom. I'm such a freaking smarty. I just chipped out here a couple of months ago and I gotta say it's a bit of a culture shock. Everyone in Kaluna says things are getting better in the Deadlands, but it seems like they're as bad as ever. You're right. I mean, what do you expect? Like you said, the royal family has everyone thinking things are looking up, but... Nolan and the off-duty guard talked about the issues facing people out in the Deadlands. Wow. Just never realized how bad everyone has it out here. I mean, the only good thing I can see is that everyone seems to stay out of each other's way for the most part. I mean, yeah, after a while, you sort of get a feel for all the major players and what they stand for. But even so, things could be a lot better. Yeah. Here, why don't you take this collectible coin? I, I got it before I shipped out as a memento, you know? But I don't know. I just don't think I want it now. You got crown coin. I just straight up made this guy doubt the words of, of the royal family. A collectible coin which bears an image of a crown, gifted by the disillusioned guard in New Panavito. That's right, question your bosses. Question your masters. So now we're going to actually go back and talk to Amelia. And then I think that'll be it for us for the night. That'll put us right about two hours. Oh, hang on. Oh, it's you. My apologies, but I have much work to do here. I can only hope the others will complete the bounty I posted in a timely manner. To all trailblazers, if any of you have the time, I need six black carapace. The quartermaster would appreciate the help, and I can pay a fair price for them. Butler. This is, I'm never gonna get out. I'm never gonna get back there. Another thing I need to grab now that I've got my um, now that I've got my um, pickaxe, I can sneak in the back of the town and there's a building I can I can smash the wall in and I can get a sniper rifle and a couple of other items. Another nice little. Upgrade. This is probably a clunker before it spent a century sitting out in the elements. Hey, there's a key on the floor of the vehicle. Or if this goes to the door of the inn, it does. <laughs> Heard the sirens. Going to try for Kaluna. If you're reading this, we pray for you. Feel free to use our inn if you need shelter. Not coming back. Aw. Oop. 
Oh, super secret. Y'all ready for the super secret? Probably gonna die right here. Looks like this statue's armaments can be moved. Try to remove them. When you remove the armaments, the statue crumbled. What? Oh, that's not so bad. Okay, I'm leveled up enough I can handle this guy. Reflect it, bastard. Oof, maybe I can't handle this guy. Oh, no. I don't want to die! Please, sir, have mercy on me! Oh! Stark, you're beautiful and I love you. Brother, stay alive. Oh! Photo finish, y'all. Gravel dust, engraved stone, mossy core. You got stone sword, stone shield. Jeez. That first round, I was like, oh, I can handle this guy. He ain't shit. Wrong. Lordy. There we go. All right, so this is the one we're going to bust into. Yes. Yes. Looks like this guy fell through the ceiling. Tough luck for him, but this gun seems to be in pretty good shape. Scoped rifle, UBM, shadow, long shot, TAC. Couple of bandages, noise. You can see the little, the light streaming down from the, the ceiling, the second floor. Silk robe. It's fake. Yeah. I do try to strive for that kind of like continuity of the areas. So you'll notice there's like, there's a hole in the ceiling there. Which the hole caused rainwater to be able to get in here, which softened, which softened these um, planks. And then when somebody walked on them, they fell through, hit the table, and then died. And dropped their dropped their gear there. So a little bit a little bit of a continuity thing there. And the the bus hitting the house is what caused the rubble to fall. You could see the bus is like smashed into the house. So telling a little story there. I would love to make a game set in the Deadlands using the Unreal Engine. 
um, and have it be like a, a scaving and survival, like third person, third person shooter type game. Um, I think it'd be a lot of fun. I have actually done some some light script work and like planning for a game like that. It's just a matter of me actually learning the engine and then making it. And with it taking me like four years of my life to make this game, I've really been kind of leery of starting another big project. Oh, that's right, I have a machete now. Let's see if I know enough about the Imperial Senate to talk to this guy. Nope, not yet. Not enough Imperial Senate lore. Oh, but you know what I do have is probably Hunter lore. I guarantee you I have enough Hunter lore. always dreamed of joining the Hunter's Guild, but they don't allow C-types. Thanks to our brittle bones, they consider us to be too much of a liability. Bastards. Alrighty. You're back. What did you find? Well, we checked out the wreckage, and the Zeppelin definitely wasn't shot down. Part of the cabin looked like it had been ripped open by some sort of animal. An animal, you say? But what animal could have brought down a Zeppelin before they could even call for help? Here, take this. We found it while we were searching the wreckage. It might tell you more about what happened. The flight recorder. That was a lucky find indeed. With this, we should be able to figure out exactly what happened. Well, there's more. We searched the entire area, but were unable to find any survivors or even any bodies. However, we found tracks leading east from the crash site. East to Ensenada. What was the role of the dead handers in all of this, I wonder? Yeah, about that. We talked to Zebulon Gaelkos. He said to give you this letter. A letter from Zebulon Gaelkos? The information you have given me will require careful consideration. Please, allow Zephyr Airways to pay for you to stay at the inn tonight. Tomorrow, I would like to speak with you once again. Sure thing. Come on, guys. Let's go. Welcome back. A review of the flight recorder's data revealed troubling information. It appears that the captain diverted north from his planned course. As they passed over the Senecia Plains, they became aware that a... <clears throat> man with wings was pursuing the zeppelin they opened fire but their weapons were ineffective this man quickly closed the distance between them and made short work of the zeppelin after reviewing the tapes i decided not to share this information with hq to do so would only cause them to brand the crew as drunkards or crazy people i mean really a winged man it sounds like something out of the old stories about Halloween and all that nonsense there is a silver lining however the letter you brought me from Mr. Gailkos indicated that a number of crew members were rescued and are being tended to. Apparently, the crew had been making deals with the dead handers for quite some time, losing, quote-unquote, supplies as they flew low over Ensenada in exchange for compensation. Mr. Gailkos has requested that we consider establishing an official relationship with his people and will be returning our crew as a sign of good faith. So not only have you solved the mystery of the downed vessel, you have helped us to tap into a lucrative new market as well. Please take this with our thanks. You got Corporate Pass. With that, you can receive free passage on any trips which take place entirely within Maraman airspace. Additionally, I was told to give you this as thanks for helping us to establish an official presence in Ensenada. You got a long shot tack, a truth lens, and 5,000. So I got two long shots now, hell yeah. Truth lens and 5,000 volts. So the long shots increase your accuracy, your attack power a little bit, and they let characters that can use two-handed firearms of any kind can now use sniper rifles with a long shot equipped. And with that, our business has concluded for now. I'm sure we'll meet again. All right, everyone, who's ready to fly? Me, me, me.
Would you like to fly to New Panavinto? Uh, yeah. All right, we have you booked. Enjoy your flight. So this is nice because the first trip out to the west, you have to go through the mountains and it's a whole big thing. And then you get your passport and it's, you don't have, you skip the mountains, but it's still a little bit of a hassle. And then you go out here, you do your thing, and then you come back a second time and now you can fly. So I feel like it, it helps build the player's appreciation for the, for the quick travel, right? Well, we're back in New Panavinto. It's been a crazy few days. I'll say, now we just need to ask about getting to Mateo. I heard a member of the crew say that they were building a field office near the Hunter's Guild. But we're not gonna worry about that for now because it is late and my throat hurts. So with that, we are done with another episode of Voltage Genesis. Now I lied and said we'd get to Mateo. I am sorry. But hopefully, in a future installation of the game, we will finally be able to reach our first major jump in difficulty. And we'll get to explore some new areas, see some cool new enemies, and uncover a little bit more of the, the backstory of this country that we're starting to kind of peel away. So, thank you everybody, as always, for watching. Thank you to Calrea for your unflagging support. Thank you to Aeon Agus for coming in for a while, hanging out. I think he's still in here, but he might be asleep because it's like 4, 4.30 in the morning for him now or something like that. So if you are still listening, I appreciate you, sir, and I hope that you have a great day tomorrow. Um, thank you to Heifel, as always, for coming in and giving some words of support. And thank you to Voltaire for complimenting my, uh, my voice acting. Um, and finally, Overshot, I appreciate you coming in, even though you were only here for a few minutes. Um, it's always great if somebody sees, sees I'm on, they come in and just say hi and then bail. That, that's great for me. It's, I, I just, I'm just happy to know you're thinking about me. So with that, we are going to call it here. Um, the challenge is still on to determine what we will be playing next Saturday night. But unless something crazy happens, I think it's going to be Abzu. I'm not averse to crazy things happening. That's just what I think is going to end up going down. So, um, As of right now, my next scheduled stream is going to be Wednesday at 11 a.m. So until then, stay healthy, stay safe out there, y'all. Later.